All right, easily the number one question I get, whether it is people that are getting launch monitors and then trying to figure out how to use it or figure out maybe there's an issue, or people that come and work with me for lessons, it is how far should I hit my driver? Well, you can actually figure that out, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. What's going on everybody, Scott Oden coming at you. We're gonna talk about how to figure out how far you should hit your driver so at least you can tell, hey, am I hitting at the distance I need to? This is also really helpful when we're working on our swing. You know, hey, you wanna add distance or I feel like I should hit the ball farther. Well, you can actually figure out if that's true or not and you would figure out what areas of your game that you need to work on to get distance. And distance is a big part of the game. So if you're looking for help with that, if you need a personalized approach, make sure you check out our online Own Your Swing Bootcamp that is starting up here very soon. I will link that down in the description below. Okay, so when we get into, hey, how far should I hit the ball, all right? There's a couple of things that go into it. So first off, the first question I'm always going to ask when people say, hey, I feel like I know I hit the ball 300 yards or 320. You know, if you've been on Twitter, you go on Instagram, you know everybody says they hit the ball 300 yards. Well, here's the first thing that you can do. There's a really, really simple way to kind of get in the ballpark of how far you should hit the ball. And all you're gonna need is your calculator. So just grab your phone, open up your calculator app, and all you're gonna do is take your club speed and you're going to times that by 2.7. So this is a pretty generic formula that was put out by TrackMan pretty long time ago now, almost 10 years now. And this is going to assume a couple of things. It's gonna assume one, you have pretty good launch conditions with the driver. It's also assuming that you hit the ball really, really well in terms of your smash factor, right? It's assuming that you do that. And then you have good spin rates, launch angles, and you have to have a moderately firm fairway because that includes run out, okay? So this ball is not gonna carry 270. It's going to go 250 and then it's going to run out to 270, maybe even 240, 235, depending on how you hit it, okay? So that is a very generic number, but it gets you in the ballpark. I usually do this with people because they'll say, oh, I feel like I should be hitting the ball, you know, 280, 290 yards. I know I do that. Then we'll say, all right, how fast are you swinging it? And they're swinging it 90 miles per hour, and there's just no way that you can do that. Again, unless you're like playing really downwind, really downhill, and you're playing in the British Open with those types of conditions, then you might get it. But that's just the way it is, and that's just something we have to be re you know, realizing as we go through. So is your speed actually able to generate how far you can hit your driver? If it can't, then that's where you start looking at stuff like stack systems, some speed training, workouts, all of that stuff as you go. Now, there are more sophisticated ways to figure out how far you are hitting the golf ball. And so I have here, right in front of me, I've got this ping chart, okay? I've showed you guys this in the past. Just a, ch a chart of optimal launch and spin. I actually keep this handy, again, to showcase to people what's going on. So what are some of the other factors that determine how far that golf ball is gonna go? Well, the big one's gonna be, hey, what is your ball speed, okay? So with that equation I did before, that was club speed. Now, in reality, again, that's assuming you hit the ball well. Now, with our launch monitors, we actually have a much better idea of how fast that golf ball is traveling. You can get your ball speed number. So as you can see in this chart here, as we're looking over on the left-hand side, you're gonna see driver ball speeds. So for all of you out there that are saying, hey, I must, you know, I know I hit the ball 300 yards. The thing I want you to look at is, what is your ball speed? Because on this chart, you need to have a minimum Okay, you can see over here on the right hand side of the legend, it's saying we need to be in kind of the yellowish green area, kind of going into the green. So in our chart, that's kind of in this upper right hand zone. We need to have 
160 miles per hour of ball speed, and that is on the high end of performance. That means that's the minimum, and you still have to have a lot of other really good things go well to hit a golf ball that goes 300 yards, okay? Now, when that translates out, if you were to smash it dead in the center of the club, meaning 1.50 smash factor, that means your club speed would need to be around 106, 107 miles per hour. So if you're not swinging that fast, you're not going to hit the ball 300 yards. Okay. So again, we bring that up because you either need to work on that speed or you need to look at other areas where maybe you can get your scores down, right? So that's what we're trying to say with it, okay? Now, there are other things that go into this. As you can look through this chart here, okay? The other way that you figure out, you know, people will say, hey, I do swing it. I swing it 110, but I'm only getting 250 yards, something like that. Well, again, first off, I would say look at your ball speed. What is your ball speed? Because even though you swing at 110, 115 miles per hour, are you actually getting the ball speed? Are you hitting it in the center of the face? If you're not, then it doesn't matter how fast you swing it. So just keep that in mind that you do need to hit the ball in the center of the face, get that speed that you're generating with the club and transfer it to the golf ball. Now, the other things that we would look at are launch angle, okay? And you could see on the bottom here, you have angle of the tack with the chart. So the more launch angle you get, usually you're going to be hitting up on it, but also what happens is it will bring down your spin, right? It'll bring down your spin. The more you're hitting up on it, typically the spin rate's going to drop. So when I see people that are hitting their driver, they'll say, man, I'm just not hitting it anywhere. Well, let's take our 300 yard example. So if I have 160 mile an hour ball speed, you need to be launching the golf ball about 14 to 15 degrees in the air, okay? So that's that vertical launch. Now, the other thing is you have to keep spin off of the golf ball. 23, 2400 RPMs, maybe even less. And the higher it launches, you'll see as you go through the chart, the lower the spin for optimal is because we don't want that ball shooting up high and then spinning because then all it does is float on you. That's the biggest thing that I see. I'll have people talk to me and they'll say, man, I'm hitting it, I'm hitting it. And then I'll look at their, their spin number and they're like 3,400. It's like, if you look at this chart, the only way you can have optimal being at 3,400 miles, you know, RPMs, you have to have 180, 190 mile per hour ball speed because you have a fast enough ball speed to basically battle through that spin. So if you're getting above 3000, above 3200, and you're wondering why you're hitting it short, it's because the ball is spinning too much, okay? So you have to look at that and go through it. We'll go through a couple of ways that you can combat that here in just a second, all right? But it's really important to know how far are you trying to hit it or how far do you think you should hit it? You have to understand what comes into play when it goes to distance. It's not just how far do you swing it, okay? Or how fast you swing it. It's how fast does that golf ball travel, but it's also how are you launching it, okay? You can see here in our description here of our chart, okay? I wanna go right back to our description here, okay? If we started at 300 yards, okay, 300 yards with 160 mile an hour ball speed, that same ball speed, but you increase that spin, we all of a sudden are in the 250 range, okay? 160 ball speed, the same ball speed that will hit at 300 yards is now going to hit at 250 if you are getting up into too high a spin. You're launching it low with a lot of spin, that's going to be a much shorter ball flight, okay? So you have to understand that part and you have to dial in those numbers. And that's always what we're looking to do because again, a lot of people, they're gonna say it's the technology, it's gonna be the launch monitor that they're on or whatever, but you have to look at the numbers and see if it actually makes sense for the ball to travel that far before you go through all these other things because you're gonna not see any results in, if you continue on that path, okay? So let's talk about a couple of ways now 
that you can actually improve these numbers if you are struggling with them. All right, so when we got our driver out here, the first thing we have to talk about is one, the driver does matter, okay? The driver does matter. You know, there are certain heads. I'm actually looking currently at a new driver head. This one I've had for a couple years, just not getting the same pop. Could be, you know, club face is going a little dead. I doubt that, it's not that old but it's just, I'm not getting it. And there's other ones that I'm hitting a little bit better as far, as far as contact goes. So getting that center of the face contact is gonna be huge. The golf ball also will matter, okay? If you're trying to get more ball speed, okay? The ball you play will really have an effect on that. If you have a softer compression golf ball, you will see the ball speed drop, okay? And my testing in here, just from going from a Pro V1 to a Pro V1X, I've seen up to five miles per hour of ball speed drop, okay? Now, the trade-off with the higher compression golf balls, they spin more, okay? So if you're trying to get your spin down, going to a softer, lower compression golf ball actually could be a really good choice because even though you lose a little bit of ball speed, you're gonna win by getting so much spin off of it that it actually ends up working out for you. So just something you have to try as you go through. Now, the other things we have to look at are attack angle, okay? We have to look at attack angle. This is going to be a big one when I work with people. Attack angle, getting that, that swing to go more up, you are going to see that you can get it to launch higher, you can get the ball to spin less. And again, if we go to our chart, the attack angles that are positive on the bottom, as it's always gonna be, hey, we're hitting more of especially in the higher speeds, but pretty much across the board, I'm gonna get more of my optimal launch out of this type of attack angle, right? So we need to get hitting up on it. So a couple of ways we can hit up on it. One, ball position. We can get the ball more forward. When I get the ball forward, that encourages me to catch the, the ball when I'm swinging back up with the club, right? The other thing that we can do is we can actually get a little bit of tilt with our upper body into the swing. We can actually feel like what we do is we actually bump our hips forward. I'm gonna bump my hips towards the target. And what that does is actually tilt my body back, okay? That can actually promote us hitting up on it a little bit more. Now, word of caution, don't do too much of that. You'll start actually bottoming out a little too early. That can actually happen where you skip into it. We don't want that obviously either as we go through this. Now, the last one, and I honestly think this is the most important, is when we're swinging, when we're going down, if we wanna swing up into the golf ball, then we need to get the club lower earlier, okay? So people that struggle hitting up on a golf ball, they try to hold their angles. They try and hold the angle, hold, 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 hold. The problem is by the time you're gonna to get to the ball, you have to get down at the ball because you're so high. The club is so high that it has to travel down to get to the ball. You're gonna have bad contact, tons of spin. What I wanna see is, I like for people to feel like they're putting the club on the ground early and they're gonna drag that club up into the ball. Now, obviously when you hit it, I'm not gonna actually put the club onto that golf ball, but that's what we wanna feel like as we go through this, okay? So we can get that angle up, that's obviously gonna help. The last thing is we can keep spin off the ball by squaring up the club face. If I square it up, you're typically going to get spin off of it. Spin is generally you know, an overall number. That ball will start spinning more if you leave it open. It typically spins less if you close it. Now, if you close it too much, you're gonna launch it too low. If you, if you leave it open, you're gonna launch it too high. All of those things come into play. So I'm gonna make a swing here. Not super warmed up, so I don't expect a ton of speed, but let's see if we can get some numbers on this guy. All right, so let's look at this guy right here, okay? So didn't hit it too bad. Again, not one of my you know, most athletic feeling swings being the, one of the first ones of the day but let's just go through our process here. So my club speed there was 104. So if I do the math on that, just using our first method, I can hit it 280 doing that. Now I only hit it 264 and a half. That is because I did not make great contact. My smash factor there 
1.41. That's not going to cut it. Not something we want. Okay. Now, the couple of the other things that we would look at, the ball speed, that's going to be down because I didn't make great contact. So when we look at it, 146 and a half. Okay. So even if we rounded it up to 150, we, let's look at our launch. I launched it at 17, which actually isn't too bad for what we're trying to do. This is saying I should launch it more around 14. Okay. So I got it a little too high. Again, that's probably where the lack of contact came from. I actually probably hit it a little out, a little high on the face, but that's all right. And what we're going to get then is we can look at our distance. We should be around with those numbers, 2,400 RPMs, launching it at around 16, 17 degrees. I should hit that ball anywhere from, I'm kind of in the yellow, okay? Now I'm a little high of what they're telling me. So if I got that a little lower, they're saying I should be maybe approaching because I'm in between 275, okay? Again, if I hit it well. So I'm at 265 on a poor hit. So not too bad, right? Not too bad. And again, I would have to say we're in kind of the ballpark, okay? So that's how we can tell how far are we going to hit it. Now, what do I work on? I didn't hit that one particularly well. I wouldn't be extremely excited to hit that drive. But the point is we can actually look at our numbers. It's not just, hey, this thing's not reading right or something's going on or, man, why can't I hit it? It's all about those numbers and what you're putting out there. It's a big puzzle piece to help us get this ball to travel as far as we can. And that is what the pros are really good at is figuring that out as we go through. Now, one little bonus part to this that we didn't talk about, the shaft of your golf club. Okay, so I talk about this one a lot with people. People go get fit and they say, all right, I'm gonna go get fit for a driver and they go to these big box stores. Now, I have to say, the big box stores, hey, they're great, whatever, but the shafts that they carry, they're typically carrying the stock shafts that you get in drivers. And uh, unfortunately, what happens with those is they are extremely soft, all right? They're extremely soft because what happened is people didn't like to go down in the flex, right? You know, as we're getting older, nobody likes to be told, hey, you're a stiff flex, but now you're actually a regular flex. So what they found was they're gonna make the shaft softer. So a lot of the golf shafts are getting lighter. And so what that means is, you know, you might need to look at the shaft in a much more detailed way than just saying, hey, I'm either a regular or a stiff or whatever, okay? You need to go and look at the shaft. I actually keep the same golf shaft. This is a hazardous smoke, but it's a 70 gram and it's a 6.5 and it's actually a 3.5 torque. Um, and if I ever switch the head on the driver, I keep the shaft. I will just change out the tip and make it fit the driver that I'm getting. And the reason for that is because this shaft works for me, okay? And not all golf shafts are the same, and there's just so much that goes into it. So if you are really struggling with it and it really bothers you, I would highly recommend that you go check out a fitter that has a ton of golf shop or golf shaft options to try, okay? So the one we typically use around here is Club Champion doesn't matter. I don't have any affiliation with them. That's just the closest one to us that does it. But those are the types of things that you're going to look at. All right. Now, also keep in mind, golf shafts, they get expensive really, really quick. Just keep that in mind as you go. People are always shocked by that. That's why I keep this one. I keep it and I'm not going to change because I don't want to have to buy it again. All right. I'll just change the tip for $10 if I ever have to change the driver head. All right. So, that's how we look at the golf club, and that's another note to have about hitting it farther. All right, guys, so that is how far should you hit your driver? Well, the question always is it depends, right, on a bunch of things. But now you can go through and start looking at what are the factors to why I'm hitting the ball the distance that I should be, right? And so, again, it's super cool to have this technology that is available to us, again, it's something I wouldn't imagine 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, that it's gonna be so easily available, but 
the big thing now is you have to understand what's going on with it, what's it telling you, and then make the right corrections, okay? So that's something we would look at as we're going through it. But again, if you have any questions about it, leave any comment down below. And as always, click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. We're gonna have plenty more helping you get better with your golf swing, so don't miss out on it. Thanks everybody for watching. Peace.